Ivan Glazenberg and his team managed perhaps the world's smartest commodity deal when they floated Glencore in May 2011, just weeks after the prices of the stuff that they dug up and traded had peaked. Four years later, the price of coppers halved and the company's shares have lost three quarters of their value. That would have been utterly brilliant timing by Mr Glazenberg, except that he didn't sell out in the IPO and so shared in the loss on the way down. Now he and his team are planning to buy back in, offering to take over a fifth of the new capital that the company is aiming to raise as part of an effort to cut its debt and so avoid losing its investment grade rating. Now back in 2011, investors would have been well advised to follow the Glencore example and sell, not buy. Should they follow Mr Glazenberg and buy in now? Well, it's tempting to say yes. Mining stocks have been crashing for years, along with commodity prices. The long-standing problems of China have been suddenly and very painfully recognised by investors the world over in the past month, opening up a new shaft under the miners' share prices, and of those of Glencore in particular. Now, here's one reason to think that miners may be approaching rock bottom. The total value of them all is down to less than 1% of world equity market capitalisation. Now, it has been lower, but only when other companies were pumped up by the dot-com bubble around the turn of the millennium. Now, to think that shares can drop significantly further from here requires one of three things. Commodity prices drop further, debt eats up more of the miners' income, leaving less for shareholders, or fear of either outcome drives down the multiple of profits that investors are willing to pay. Now, commodities have halved, but as value investors often discover to their horror, even much lower prices can always halve again. Here we've got the spot price of industrial metals in real terms. And if it halved again from here, that would take it only back to its 2001 low. You can see that on there. That's before the China boom drove prices through the roof. Now, worries about debt have consumed shareholders in Glencore. The focus on the balance sheet was clear to the announcement of a $2.5 billion share issue, which will dilute existing investors. The share price jumped by as much as 13% early on, and it's still up 7%. Now, Glencore was the most exposed to worries about debt, thanks to its leveraged trading business. That would suffer a lot from a downgrade. But the entire sector is struggling from overinvestment in too many and too big mines. And the fact that Glencore has been forced to face reality might mark a turning point. Analysts are marking down profits already, but only about as fast as commodity prices are falling. That is, earnings estimates have halved since September last year, bringing them back in line. Still, their estimates of profit margins, that's shown here in blue, are back down to where they were in 1999. And after that 1999 low, the share prices of the sector jump by a quarter in the next six months. But the sector doesn't look screamingly cheap. On price to forward earnings, it's barely at a discount to the wider market, and the shares still trade above book value. That's a book value, much of which is going to have to be written off. The confidence of Glencore's managers in buying its shares should be ignored by investors hunting for value. Even so, Glencore's example in shutting mines Cutting its dividend and strengthening the balance sheet might encourage the rest of the sector, and together with overly negative short-term sentiment, could easily support a temporary recovery in bombed-out mining stocks. But for the long run, what really matters is demand from China and its effect on prices. There's no sign yet of commodities stabilising, let alone rebounding, and mining shares provide little margin of safety if this slide in prices that's been underway for four years were to continue.